What's up my comic comrades? Today we're talking about one of the most popular Hulks out there, the Red Hulk. We've talked about him before on the show, but we've never given him a full-blown History Of episode. So sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, maybe some candy, your favorite drink, and let's talk about the Red Hulk. The Red Hulk first appeared in Hulk issue 1 in January of 2008. He was created by Jeff Loeb and Ed McGuinness. However, as most of us know, the Red Hulk is none other than General Thunderbolt Ross. And he was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, first appearing in The Incredible Hulk issue 1 in May of 1962. And if you know anything about Thunderbolt Ross, you know he absolutely hates Bruce Banner and the Hulk. As he's been humiliated and defeated by Banner and or the Hulk countless times over the years. That mixed with Ross being jealous of the Hulk's power, wanting it for himself, makes for a pretty intense rivalry. One of the biggest, if not the biggest, the Hulk has with someone, as Ross has literally been there from the beginning. I'm talking about issue one of The Incredible Hulk, which is what made Thunderbolt Ross the perfect person to become the Red Hulk. So let's see how that happened. Now, like I said a minute ago, the Red Hulk first appeared in Hulk Volume 2, Issue 1, in January of 2008. But we didn't get his origin until two years later in Hulk Issue 23. But before I break down Issue 23, let's talk briefly about Issue 22, where it's revealed who he was after 21 issues of not knowing. In Issue 22, the Red Hulk is doing his thing, laying the smackdown, as The Rock would say, on a bunch of other characters. However, towards the end of the issue, the Red She-Hulk shows up. That's right, there's also a Red She-Hulk, who first appeared in Issue 15 of this same title. But not only did she show up, she showed up at the perfect time. As the Red Hulk is saying to himself, I pushed myself too hard, gotta get to Banner. At which point someone kicks him in the face and he says, not now, not her. As we see Red She-Hulk saying, we took a vote, it's time for you to die. The two then start fighting, but Red Hulk having already exerted most of his energy is easily handled by Red She-Hulk. She-Hulk even says, it's the one thing Green Hulk has over you. The madder he gets, the stronger he gets. But not you. You build up all that energy like a reactor, but without a cooling system. Your body overheats. If you guys didn't know, the madder the Red Hulk gets, the hotter he gets. Anyway, she then proceeds to bash his face on her knee all MMA style while saying, let me draw off some of that excess energy. That's the sort of thing you'd do. On second thought, I'll just take it all, as she literally drains the Red Hulk's powers. Red Hulk then says, do it then, take my life. But she looks in his eyes with her eyes wide open in shock saying, I can't. And he responds saying, why the hell not? And on the final page of the issue, she says, because you're my father, revealing that the Red Hulk is in fact Thunderbolt Ross, but that also means that the Red She-Hulk is Betty Ross, General Ross's daughter. And this brings us to his origin in issue 23 of The Hulk. The issue gives us a number of flashbacks of confrontations with Thunderbolt Ross and The Hulk, really driving home the point of why Ross hates The Hulk. We see several instances of Ross trying to defeat The Hulk, but failing, the most notable of which is when Ross committed treason by teaming up with MODOK to release Abomination so that he can kill The Hulk. And yes guys, I'm well aware, if you take a shot every time I say The Hulk, you're gonna be feeling good real quick. Anyway, back to the comic. Of course, the Hulk defeated Abomination. But when Betty found out what her father had done, committing treason against his own country and teaming up with MODOK, letting a monster villain loose in order to kill the Hulk, it caused a massive fallout between the two of them. So much so, Ross contemplated killing himself while looking at a picture of his daughter. But to make matters worse, sometime after that, the monster he freed to kill the Hulk ended up killing his daughter. That's right, Abomination murdered Betty. And since he's the one who freed Abomination, obviously he feels responsible for his daughter's death. But Ross didn't learn from this. He just fell into a deep depression, filling up with more rage and anger towards the Hulk. And while trying to drown his sorrows with a bottle of Jack, MODOK and the leader appear saying to him, I have a proposal for you. Ross replies, why in God's name would I trust either of you? And the leader says, you know from personal experience, I have the capability ability to revive the dead. Imagine if your daughter was alive. Ross is like, go to hell. If you touch one hair on Betty's head, I'll hunt you down and kill you. Leader then looks at him and says, the Hulk will return. You know it, we know it. And MODOK then looks at Ross saying, do you want to be ready or not? So of course, with the promise of being able to defeat the Hulk, as well as bringing his daughter back, he partners with him. We then see Ross, MODOK, and Leader would use a satellite to not only knock the Hulk out, but to also siphon off the power and gamma radiation coming from Banner, collecting it at another location. That location being a base in Death Valley. It's here we also learn that the leader has already brought Betty back to life, but Ross isn't allowed to see her yet. Leader even says to Ross, this country needs you, your guidance general. You'll have plenty of time to spend with your daughter after that. And on the next page, we find out that Leader and MODOK's plan was to siphon Banner's power to use it to create a new Hulk, a Red Hulk. And that person they would make the Red Hulk was none other than the person they came to, Thunderbolt Ross. And ultimately they injected him with the gamma radiation, transforming him into the Red Hulk. And that, my comic comrades, is how Thunderbolt 
Thunderbolt Ross became the Red Hulk. But side note, we also find out that the real reason the leader wasn't letting Ross see his daughter was because when he brought her back to life, he turned her into the Red She-Hulk. So when Ross became the Red Hulk, he drained the leader of his gamma radiation saying, you have to pay for what you did to my daughter. The leader's all like, I gave her life. And Ross says, you made her into a monster like me while draining the leader of his power, turning him back into a normal human with the leader now saying, please don't leave me like this, kill me. And the Red Hulk before jumping away says, not a chance. You can spend the rest of your days like that, ordinary, without any idea of how to get back to who you were. And just like that, friends, it's time for story arcs and publication history. Let's start off with the 2010 storyline titled Fall of the Hulks. In this storyline, we were led to believe that Ross had been killed by the Red Hulk. But we know better now, don't we? Because Ross is in fact the Red Hulk. Meaning, that's impossible. And impossible it was as it was revealed that the Ross that died was actually a life model decoy. For those of you who are unaware, a life model decoy, or LMD, is a staple of the shield defense arsenal. They're essentially like artificial robot clones. Anyway, Ross's death is part of a plan that the Red Hulk and Bruce Banner made in order to take down Intelligentsia, who are a group of evil geniuses in the Marvel Universe, consisting of characters like MODOK, Wizard, and Leader. Long story short, the team of villains are defeated, and the Red Hulk tries to take over the country because why not? But the Hulk defeats the Red Hulk, by causing him to overheat. Hulk then tells the Red Hulk he can never resume his Ross identity again and then locks him up in a gamma prison. At which point Banner makes plans with Steve Rogers for the Red Hulk to join the Avengers. Red Hulk would first appear in the Avengers title in Avengers Volume 4 Issue 7 and was part of the team and book all the way to Avengers Issue 34, the finale of the series. Now working with the Avengers, we would get the Scorched Earth story arc, where the Red Hulk is tasked to deal with a deadly contingency plan left behind by the leader and MODOK. Said plan is known as the Scorched Earth program, hence the name of the story arc. The program is an endgame alternative developed by MODOK and the leader in case they were killed. Of course, the Red Hulk is able to defeat the Scorched Earth plans, and he does so by destroying MODOK. However, what he didn't know at the time is he wasn't able to stop the creation of MODOK Superior, which is a clone of the original MODOK created by AIM. It's also around this time the Red Hulk would join with the Avengers to search for the Infinity Gems. He literally teams up with Namor and Thor to track down the Time Gem and the Power Gem. And because he did such a fantastic job, it's at this point he's formally inducted into the Avengers, even though he was already doing stuff with them. I will will say though, several of the Avengers weren't exactly thrilled he was officially part of the team now. This would then lead into the Fear Itself storyline where the Red Hulk would defend Avengers Tower against Angrier, aka The Thing, who was turned into one of the Serpent's servants. And let's just say he didn't come out unscathed, taking some serious hits and injuries. In the end, Avengers Tower collapsed on him and the Red Hulk was nearly killed by The Thing, but MODOK inadvertently drew the attention of Thing away from him. Later on, Red Hulk was found, but barely alive. Then skipping some stuff here and there, we have the Thunderbolts. There's actually been different iterations of the Thunderbolts, but of course I'm talking about the Red Hulk's version of the Thunderbolts. That's right, he made a team of heroes who are willing to kill when needed. It consisted of Red Hulk, Deadpool, Agent Venom, Punisher, and Elektra. And the way Ross was able to get the team together was by promising the team that they would help each other with a different mission that was close to each individual team member's heart. They would go on countless missions together with Ross, aka Red Hulk, being their leader. But all good things must come to an end, which is what eventually happened. Sometime after this, we see that Doc Green set out to rid the world of gamma-powered heroes and villains, so he developed a cure to get rid of their powers. He used this cure on characters like A-Bomb and the Red She-Hulk, at which point he went after the Red Hulk. And with some help from Deadpool, Doc Green was able to set an elaborate trap for the Red Hulk, and after a massive battle, he managed to eject Ross with the cure. So now with no powers, Ross was arrested by the US military for deserting them and countless other things he did. But just like that, my comic comrades, it's time for powers and abilities. As for Red Hulk's powers and abilities, it's very similar to that of the Hulk's, with a few differences here and there. For instance, as we all know with the Green Hulk, the madder he gets, the stronger he gets. But with the Red Hulk, the more radiation he's exposed to, or absorbs, the stronger he gets and he can even absorb a bunch of different forms of radiation, like cosmic radiation. What's crazy about this is that the Green Hulk is always putting out levels of radiation, meaning that when the Red Hulk fights the Green Hulk, he gets stronger by absorbing that radiation that Banner's putting off. The problem is that the Red Hulk's energy output is a lot higher than the Hulk's, so the madder he gets, the hotter he gets. Meaning if the Red Hulk gets too angry and keeps exerting himself, he'll overheat, and essentially passes out. What I'm saying is, like one of you pointed out in a past Red Hulk episode, is that the Red Hulk throttles like a PC with a bad cooling system. 
Another difference is that the Red Hulk retains his intelligence, unlike Banner when turning into Savage Hulk. Essentially, the Red Hulk is very similar to the main Green Hulk with several differences here and there. The point is the Hulk is incredibly powerful, so powerful he was able to use his radiation absorption to drain the Odin force from Thor during their fight, making himself stronger and Thor weaker during the battle. Dude was also able to siphon all the power cosmic from the Silver Surfer and nearly killed him in the process. So now you may be saying, what? He sounds stronger than the normal Banner Hulk. And yes, in the short term or base level he is. But long term, remember he eventually overheats, meaning Green Hulk is still strongest there is. Now I'm sure you guys want some Red Hulk reading recommendations, so check out Hulk Volume 1 Hulk, Hulk Fall of the Hulks, Red Hulk Scorched Earth, and Thunderbolts Volume 1 No Quarter. That's more than enough to get you all started. And just like that, my comic comrades, that brings today's episode to a close. But if you like today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like our channel, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps us out. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.